we view ourselves as the hero of our prayer, of our fasting. I prayed enough. I fasted enough. I'm good. God's going to speak to me. It's like, no, actually, God's the hero. You're just a participant. It's a new year. Mm. Happy Here new year. Here we are. Happy yeah. new year. 2024. Yeah, cheers. Maybe not actually. Cheers. Blink, blink. There it is. Yeah, there for it is. audio reasons. For, for audio reasons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Alec, welcome to the Thank show you. today. We're glad you're here. Thank you for having me on. Thanks Absolutely. for jumping in with the backward hat too, channeling your 90s yeah, kid I, vibe. I couldn't yeah, control. Listen, curly w. hair is an amazing thing. Yeah. Um, no, I dig it. And that's it. it. Yeah, that's all you got to say. Like, curly hair. 90s, 90s are in. We, we saw a, uh, is yeah. it cake mm. episode last night? And they were, it was all is about the cake? 90s. Is it cake? Have you never seen that show on Netflix? Oh Wait, gosh. I think I've heard about it. That's like they like it's yeah, like they, fake they, or not? They, or, exactly. Or, actually, they I, I, these cakes I don't fully that know. Look guessing. like these objects, and and there's normally a theme, and they go in and they cut it, yeah. And it's like it's cake oh or it's God. not, but cake. it looks just like the real one. So and these like, judges have people making, 20, and we're not bets? we're not sponsored by it. is it okay. cake. This is just the 90s kid. Anyway, we're going to get into the burning question. That wasn't today's sponsor. I no, thought that was not. Oh, okay. Yeah, we actually don't have a sponsor. On the show, but for hey, this show, Netflix. This show. If you're yeah. if you're looking, oh probably gosh. not. All right. So, anyways, so '90s kid, can we throw it over to you for the burning question? Absolutely. So we have a good burning question today, um, Julie. Let's let's actually have you answer this one, and it is by at Auntie Lizzie. Mm -hmm. All right, Auntie Lizzie. She Auntie said, Lizzie, "We see you. I yes. hear you, Julie." The question is this: How do I support my husband who doesn't think he is good enough to be a parent? So mm. it's a pretty good question. What would be maybe a quick take that you would have on that for Auntie Lizzie? Yeah, I think something real quick for you. So I know you're about ready to jump in. Yeah. Do you think she's asking from a place of a husband who's currently a parent who is disengaged because he thinks he's not a good parent? Or do you think she's asking from a place of she's married to a guy who does he's scared to become a dad? Mm. because i'm just curious how you're going to answer it i was actually thinking that too because i know certain even guy friends of mine who don't want to have a kid because they felt like they they, they don't yeah, yeah. interesting interesting yeah. yeah okay if i can really go sherlock holmes on you mm. because her username is auntie lizzie whoa i am going to assume <gasps> it's pre-children wow. wow which makes my answer really dumb um i was gonna say if god's given him a child. Hmm. There's grace. There's grace. Okay. Hmm. Great. We got that one out of the way. Now let's go with the other one. <laughs> yeah. But if he's not a father yet and he just believes he won't be good at it, yeah. he's not going to be awesome at it hmm. all the time. Hmm. And it does require you coming to terms with that or else your failures will really take over hmm. the moments that are meant to be for both the kids' growth, your growth, your relationships' growth, your your relationship with God's growth, because that's not a word, growth, because you then make it about you and your lack and how you don't mm. have what you need and maybe your parents didn't give mm. you what you need. Yeah. And parenting is all about, um, it's really all about the relationship between you and God and how desperately we need God to do this well. Hmm. Like, it's so true. Desperately. Hmm. Anytime you're like, I've arrived. I've, you know. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Get I'm, humbled. I'm higher than a seven. Um, <laughs> That's a future episode. <laughs> on a scale from <laughs> one to ten. Yeah. You realize, oh, this is impossible yeah. without the grace of God. It really does break my heart to think of the parents who don't yeah. know God, who are not filled with the Holy Spirit and are trying to do this well. Yeah. Because it probably does feel impossible day in and day out. Wow. So how she can help her husband, I would say just really praying and believing that God will meet him there and that if they are meant to have children, if they both come to a place of surrender and yeah. yielding to the will of God, then her husband will hear directly from God because that's what he's going to need to sustain yeah. his fatherhood mm. journey. That's wow. good. <coughs> Excuse we're, me. That's we're really recording good. this. We're not recording this on January 2nd. I mean, mm. I don't think anyone's under the illusion that we're recording we're on January recording this 2nd. on uh, Christmas Day. We are, we are texting him. We're not recording <laughs> on Christmas Day either, 2023. We are recording it in December yeah. 2023. And uh, I love your answer, by the way. Um, but this is a season. This is the Advent season. 
when we're recording it. And as I've been praying um, for our family and praying for our team and, and praying for the people that God has given us the opportunity to serve and speak into, I've been reminded in this season that this is a time of open heavens. Mm -hmm. And it's a time for us to receive things that we otherwise couldn't receive and perceive and understand the miraculous in ways that maybe we couldn't perceive it and understand it. And, and I sense that God is preparing us and wants to speak to us in ways that we've never engaged with him before okay. and, and feel a connection and a closeness and a mm. clarity as we're moving into 2024. Again, I'm speaking from the place of 2023 because technically we're in 2023. Mm. But now for us in 2024, I feel this invitation Like God wants us mm. to hear his voice. God, like we're y'all, it's an election year in the US. Mm. Let's just call it for what it is. Like there's gonna be a lot of noise. Yeah. Gonna be a lot of craziness, chaos, of tension, arrogance, yeah. tension. A lot of offenses. A lot all so of that. Much, yeah. And and I'm I'm making the decision now. I'm like, God, I wanna humble myself mm. right now mm. because I need what you have. Like I need to open heaven. If you look at even the the season of Advent, which is yeah, the yeah. idea of God, who's the greatest, stooped the lowest, the ultimate act of humility, taking yeah. on the frailty of our humanity. So for, for our viewers who don't know, that's what Advent means? Is Yes, it's yes. the season of Advent. It means, mm -hmm. it means a, an arrival. And so we, we yeah. live. It's also a waiting. It's a like waiting, a yes. Anticipation of things okay. to come. So, so it's the, we have the advent with Jesus coming, being born, dwelling among us. And then we have the promise of him coming again. And we live in between the two advents right now. That's where we're living. And so what, what I'm, what I'm sensing, what I'm feeling is like, there is clarity. There is conviction. There are words for those who will humble themselves and say, God, I can't do this in my own power. I can't do this in my own strength. I need you to speak into my life in ways that you've never spoken in my life before. Like, I don't want to just make my really great plan for this year. Like, listen, I'm all about mm. planning, but God, I want to create space for you to speak to me and to receive from you mm -hmm. in ways that I've never known and never felt connected to you. And I feel like the people in our world, whether it's the children that we're raising or the people that we're doing life with, the people at our work, whatever it is, like, they need us to be sensitive to the spirit in ways or maybe in the past we've been able to get away with our own talents our own smarts or whatever it is yeah and god's saying no like I, i'm going to be speaking and it's the humble that are going to hear my voice and and i love this quote absolutely from cs Lewis. i love it and i hate it because it challenges me but it says as long as you are proud you cannot know god and that's been one of these quotes i've had going through my mm -hmm. head right now i'm like god those areas of my life where I've been like, I've got this figured out, but mm. can you help me in these other areas? And as I'm going into the new year, I'm like, okay, I'm doing kind of good over here. God, will you will you help make these things happen? Oh my God, I need you in all of it because I sense there's a connection that you're inviting me into, yeah. a stewardship that you're inviting me into that's, that's going to be astounding. Well, I think it's not even just a proudness sometimes. I mean, this is uh, hitting the nail on the head for me because even last night, like I said, it's not even a proudness. It can be something that just creeps in really easily. I mean, it's it's the new year. People, they have big goals. Yeah. And I know that people, they're going to be trying to take on these goals. And then all of a sudden, they're going to be like, man, like, I just can't, I can't do this. Like, I know my wife and I right now, we're, we're taking on um, just some big stuff that we're working on. And uh, yeah, we've just been like running into like, man, like just this overwhelming feeling. And then we just have to keep pushing and just keep being like, okay, well, we can figure this out and be like, oh my gosh, man, this is so overwhelming. Man, maybe we can figure this out. And it's just so much keeps compounding. Hmm. And last night we actually, I mean, it's, it's funny enough that, that you mentioned that because last night we were like, man, we're, we've been doing this wrong. Hmm. We need to not be just thinking about, man, are we doing, you know, like the right thing? Should we be doing this? Should we do that? It's more about, hey, how should we pray into something mm -hmm. to get more help on something? Because in a sense, going back to what you were saying about pride, it it's not, it is a type of pride, but it's not always pride because we're just trying to do things because we have goals. Like we're, we're ambitious, like humans, I'm, I'm talking about humans are ambitious. Like everyone's going to start off this new year 
excited about something yeah. and they're all going to go towards it and they may have stuff that they maybe feel like they need to do from god or maybe they have stuff that they don't know that they need to do from god but people they're going to hit this point of like what do i do and so ad you're talking about this open heavens right now right yeah and so this episode um if people haven't really picked it up yet it's it's more about this kind of like open heavens which I'll speak for people who are listening right now who don't feel like they don't have an open heaven. Mm -hmm. Like right. you're talking about like this is an open heaven season. People might be like, well, I have no idea what that would even mean <laughs> or even look like. Yeah. So so what, like, let's just clearly define today, what are we wanting to cover? Because you're already talking about a lot of good stuff. So for, for, for our viewers today, what are we going to be covering? This is, this is already so good. Yeah, I think, I think it's this desire to get the year right. Mm. to say yes to the right things to be led by the spirit of god like you, you guys are doing something really exciting you and maddie together and there are obstacles there are struggles that we're going to navigate and we come to those places and we're like god we want to honor you with our lives that's that's why that's why we're doing these things that's why we're making these decisions but i think like so many things it's easy to make it about us and what we're doing and even if we look at prayer I think we make prayer more about what we do and less about what God does in and through us. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like we're looking at prayer through the wrong end of a telescope. And because of that, the world feels really small rather than seeing a large mm. world of possibility and potential. And I know I've made the mistake of just trying to project what I know and what I've experienced, or maybe a slightly better version of it, a slightly better version of what it is to be a dad, what it is to be a leader, what it is to be a friend, what it is to be a husband. And, and I, I sense that God's saying, like, this is a time when my children who are called by my name are going to stand out differently, but it's not because they're trying harder and they're doing more of whatever they're doing in their own strength. I feel like this is a season and January is foundational for us to flip the script, if you will, on prayer mm. and move from this transactional approach to God. It's like it's the beginning of the year. A lot of people, you know, we're thinking about fasting. We're thinking about starting disciplines that we've talked about for a long time or starting ventures, different things like that. And that's great. But let's go to what's behind that. Like, why do we feel we need to fast? Mm. Like, I think that's a really great question. Like, yeah. why do we feel like we need to pray more? Like, what's behind that? I think for me, when I go into a fast, and this is years of doing it totally wrong, trying to do it in my own strength, failing, and then experiencing the fasts that really are an invitation from God to come, like a, a beckoning to come away, to separate myself from some things for a time for deeper focus, and night and day difference mm. in the the way that I'm able to receive and that I'm able to really set myself aside yeah. in those extended periods of um, sacrifice. I'm saying, okay, God, I mean, once was, I, I literally can think of a one day, just sun sunrise to sundown, um, food fast, that was horrible, painful. Mm. I had a caffeine headache. It was horrible. And I ended up breaking at like three in the afternoon. Oh my God. And I just thought, I am the worst Christian. Like, I don't even know <laughs> if I should have the last name Bevere. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> because I can't even fast for a day. And then there was a over like 21 day liquid fast that we did. And I didn't even want to break. Because Wait, it had you guys been are straight liquid, mm -hmm. like smoothies and stuff. Wow! And I felt oh so goodness. aware mm. and in tune because, and anytime I fast food, I also will do a, some level of social media screens, just because I have a tendency to. Um, I'll just put something else in the place of food. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I'm not going to eat, but I'm going to watch this baking show, which would be torture. But <laughs> that would be torture. <laughs> um, is it cake? <laughs> oh my gosh. There it is again. I'm going to have to check this out. But, anyways, go, go, go on, Julie. It's unreasonably entertaining. It is. It's, oh it's, my gosh. It's actually, <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. Um, and it's a great show to watch with your kids, which is always a plus mm -hmm. for us. Anyway, beyond that, again, hey, Netflix. Um, I'm looking around to see if stuff in this room is cake or not. <laughs> you will Microphone. start. Yeah, anyways, go on. Um, 
So I, yes, fasting. So that's why for me, when I'm excited for January to come, I'm loving the Christmas season and all of the wonderful things to bake. But Mm. for January to come where one, the um, corporate wide Mm. opportunity to come together and fast. And I really want you to continue in this prophetic vein that you started in specific to 2024, because that was resonating deeply Mm. with me and recognizing, wow, this is a year where with everything that's happening in Israel, like you feel it. There's people feel the The awareness, the tension that we need you, God, like we have never needed you before. And I do believe to start this year out in prayer humbling ourselves saying before we put anything on the calendar or set our goals we really do want to say here we are god Mm. hands totally wide open surrendered to what you have for us first and foremost and i think i think the surrender and i love that julie is beautiful i think the surrender is twofold it's it's not some of y'all might be hearing this like i've tried this Mm. i've tried i've tried prayer life i've tried to be more faithful in prayer more faithful reading my bible uh, I tried the fasting. I've tried incorporating disciplines, whether it's gym or whatever. Like I've tried it, and I feel like I just set myself up for disappointment every year, or to feel like I'm a failure before quarter one's even done. And specifically in the area of prayer, I, I feel this so strongly. Is there's, you're saying yes? The invitation to say yes is not to say yes to what has been. It's an invitation to say yes to a different way of praying a different understanding of prayer. Like you're actually not saying yes to the old method Mm. and the old way of prayer Mm -hmm. that led you to this place of where you were the hero Mm -hmm. of your prayer life. It's leading you to a place of surrender where God's going to meet you in prayer in ways that you didn't realize he meets people in prayer. And some of those places of pain and disappointment and tension are going to become places of authority and substance in you. And, and I feel that, and that's that's a part of the the invitation that that we've we've sensed. Like, hey, as we go into this episode, this isn't just a call to same old. Mm-hmm. Like, God's doing something fresh and new. But yeah. the thing is, miracles are easily missed. And when you look at what happened in Bethlehem, there's a lot of people who missed out on the miracle that was happening right there in the dirt in their midst mm. because they were unaware. Mm-hmm. And when we talk about fasting, you know, fasting is not a diet. Fasting is about awareness. There's so mm-hmm. much that we don't see mm-hmm. that that it would change everything about our lives, about our relationships, about the way we make decisions. And so when we come to God in humility, and as you're saying, like there's there's a, we're creating the image of God. We're created to do things and 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 to make things, and and that's and that's beautiful and it's necessary. But I just sense like as we humble ourselves before God, Mm -hmm. God's going to show us things in that place of surrender that we've been looking for for years and we haven't been able to find. And the accuser, the enemy of your soul would try to tell you like, hey, you've done this before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is just another January. Mm -hmm. This is uh, just another year. And I feel to challenge people Mm -hmm. in this moment, deny that, Mm -hmm. deny that. But then also recognize that God's inviting you into a way of prayer and connection with him that's different than the transactional religious bondage prayer mm-hmm. that's limited to specific spaces and time. Well, can I give you some more words even yeah, that? I think please. a lot of people feel that prayer is, it's dry. Mm. They feel like they, they, they just kind of like come and it's just like, like what, what am I doing here? Like, like it just feels dry. I think that they feel like it's, maybe sometimes repetitive, like they're like, I'm just going and doing like a similar thing. And, um, or they, they feel like they're sp- speaking to like a magical vending machine and, yeah. and like the sky. And, it, or even I think people just see it as even like a chore sometimes too. Yeah. And I love what you're talking about, like this, like surrender. How do we, that how could somebody get to this state of feeling like they're surrendering and get out of like these kind of areas that we're, we're kind of pinpointing right now? Yeah. Yeah. So I was actually praying and it, you didn't know this, but I was praying until I was like, God, please give me something very specific that I can give to people. Because 
I, I want people to be able to grab something and run with it. I want us to have a framework, but not a formula. Yeah. Because a formula compromises relationship. A framework helps us understand what it takes to do relationship well. well like we talk about this at, at home all the time. Like we're not trying to give you formulas. We are trying to give you frameworks um, because every family looks different. Yeah. Every relationship has its own unique expression. Those two people, those three people coming together in a family. And so five things, hmm. five things yeah. I don't want to share. But before I share them, I want, I want to read this, this verse. Okay. I felt like this verse is a, is a, a banner over everyone listening. Like this is a promise. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. That's Psalm 25 verse nine. Mm. He leads the humble. I mean, how many of y'all like want to be led this year? I want to be led this year. Yeah. Like, yes, I want to be able to look ahead and begin with the end in mind. And we should do that as responsible humans. We should ask ourselves, what, what should the end of 2024 look like? What does that look like for me physically? What does that look like for my business? All those things, like, that's great. Mm. But also we need to live with the awareness that we're not God. We don't live outside of time. There's so much about this year that we have yet to know and understand. And so we need to live with both a, a plan and expectation for what will be, but also a sensitivity and a groundedness to what's happening in the day. And it's actually when those two come together that we find a life that is meaningful and, and specific to the day and specific to the moment, but it also stretches us and enlarges us beyond the day. Yeah. So we're not just caught in the cycle of the day or the week or the month. So I'm just sharing that. So that, that requires incredible trust. It does. Because you're going through your day and then it's disrupted yeah. and you have to believe this has place. I don't have to see fully how this leads to this or this leads to that, but I'm going to trust that because this was brought to me, it's mine and I'm going to steward it well with excellence. I'm not going to just push it to the side because it doesn't fit with what I intended to do. Mm, yes. Like trusting, okay, God, it's good. You're, you're gonna weave this together. It's not on me. Well, it's like, I mean, Jesus in John 5, he says, I only do what I see the Father doing. If you look at his life, he lived with this sensitivity to the spirit where it seemed like he was going one place, but then he would get distracted and go to yeah. this place. And he'd say, I'm going it's here. Crazy. And then he's distracting, he's going here and he's going there. But no, he's not distracted. He has a plan. He has intent, but he's also open to the spirit of God. Yep. And he's seeing what's happening in the lives of the people around us. If we're called to follow in his footsteps, I have to believe that our life of prayer, our life of purpose mm. will involve that same relationship, that same movement in and out of what we thought we were going to do so we can be sensitive to what the Spirit of God is saying and inviting us to in that moment. I love it. Addison, let's, let's definitely get five. In, you ready? In, in, in I know, you're like, get, I know get people want the this. Five. I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, so get right, it. So, so the first one, and these are all S's, mm -hmm. so looking for alliteration, surrender. The first one is, is surrender. So the sin that blinds us most is pride. Mm -hmm. okay. It just does. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm more like scared, if you will, about the things that I don't know to surrender to God. And this is what Philippians 2 tells us. He gives us the will to will. He gives us the power to even do the things that we don't know we need to do. Mm -hmm. And so for me, the first step is surrender. God, there are things that only you can do in my life. I need your grace. God, God tells us in his word, he says, I give grace to the humble. I oppose the proud. Like God, I need yeah. your grace. Please give me your grace. So that looks like simply asking for it. We're told that when we ask, whether it's asking for wisdom in James one, or when we come to him, when we ask, like what we read in Luke 11, when we ask, like he is a good father. He's going to give us what we need. And the ultimate gift is the gift of himself, mm -hmm. his nature, his spirit. So the first thing is to surrender. God, I've made plans. Many are the plans that a man makes, but it's the Lord who establishes, who orders them. Like, God, I've made these plans for this year, but I'm taking time to surrender them to you. Like, you are yeah. the Lord of my life. You are the guide of this year. Lead me and guide me into all truth, right? So number one, surrender. It also it. works if you haven't made plans. It absolutely works to if you haven't made plans. start with surrender. Yeah. 100%. It works either way. Well said. You're going to have yeah. to surrender at some point. Yeah. It's like what well, Jesus says. <laughs> That's why, yeah. Like Jesus says, look, either you're going to fall on the rock or the rock's going to fall on you. But either way, you're doing business with a rock. Like at some point, it's going to, you're going to hit a rock. 
I know you have a joke. Yeah. What is it? Let me hear it. Well, it was just it was just our other sponsor of this today's show, but we were supposed to be a little bit more subtle. Yeah, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Oh my yeah, gosh, but yeah. anyways, Addison, go on. So, two. So two. number one, surrender. Right, yeah. Number two, scripture. Hmm. Scripture. Getting in scripture. Um, I heard someone say one time, and I like this, that God's voice sounds a lot like scripture. <laughs> And it's true. It, when you're in scripture, you start to see how God has spoken to people across time. You get mm -hmm. to see how God speaks to us today. And so we we don't read scripture as a holy chore. We engage with scripture to find ourselves in this great story mm -hmm. that God has invited us into. And there are principles and there are pathways that we discover in scripture. But I think what's so meaningful about scripture that we often miss is like, this is our story. Mm. This connects us to the people who have gone before us, and it's going to connect us to the people who will go and go and go beyond us, right? Like so that that idea. So scripture, mm. spend time in scripture, and I would I would specifically encourage people like start with the gospels this year. Mm. If you haven't been and in guys, the, gospels the gospels in a while, Matthew, are... Mark, Luke, John. Yep. Start with the gospels. Read about the life of Jesus. Yeah. Take inventory of what he did and why he did and ask the Holy Spirit to come in and speak to you as you're reading through it. So that's two. Number three is space. Space. Sometimes we, we, ask, we ask a lot of questions. Yeah, space. Venus. The cosmos. So yeah. We ask a lot of questions, but then sometimes we don't give space for God to give us answers. Mm. Yeah. Like, so we write all these things out, we ask questions or whatever, but we don't just sit. And this goes back to this idea of we view ourselves as the hero of our prayer, of our fasting. I prayed enough. I fasted enough. I'm good. God's going to speak to me. It's like, no, actually, God's the hero. You're just a participant. Because if you're the hero, you could become the villain. And if you're the hero or the villain, your prayer life is actually no longer about God and God connecting with you and working through you. It actually becomes about you, which then becomes a form of idolatry. Mm -hmm. So space is saying like, God, you are God. I am not. I'm creating space to just receive from you, to hear from you, to slow down my life, to take a step back, to believe that I'm not a God of productivity and the world's going to spin without my contribution. Right. So space gives space for God to speak. Y'all, and this can look simple. Yeah. It's going to look like a five, 10 minute thing in the morning where you just sit there and you close your eyes and you say, Holy Spirit, come. Reveal what you want to reveal to me today. The, the idea is for those private times is to create the conditions for us to receive from God throughout the day. Because we have, and we wouldn't say it like this, but a lot of us is like, okay, God, I'm going to pray. And when I pray, that's when you need to speak to me. And God's like, no, I want to speak to you through the whole day. And actually the answers that I'm giving you to the prayers that you're praying are often coming throughout the day. Yeah. And so it's like living with this receptivity. Like, God, how are you speaking? When are you speaking? I want to be sensitive to your voice. I want to follow your lead. And that's strengthened in us as we offer space to the Spirit of God. You're saying it's almost like you're praying whenever you create the space to pray. God has actually been answering prayers this whole time. It's actually helping you see his faithfulness because you're saying throughout the day, different things that God is already doing for you is actually the things that maybe you might already be praying for. It helps you as you look back. And it helps you as you look forward. Yeah. So it helps you see things that you missed, like you, that you are living in an answered prayer going back. And it also prepares you going forward. So you're more sensitive in those moments when those moments come. So it works both ways. I love that. Mm. So number three is space. Number four is sight. Mm. And um, Tozer, when he was talking about spiritual disciplines, observation was one of the ones that he called out, A.W. Toes, or observation. And it's, it's the Sherlock Holmes, you you see, but you do not observe. Mm -hmm. This this idea that there's so much happening around us, yeah. mm. that God's already, like he's already moving. Mm -hmm. And if we would see, if we would perceive, if we would observe, our faith would be strengthened and we would be able to ask, we would be able to obey, we would be able to be courageous in ways mm -hmm. that we're just not gonna be courageous if we're not seeing the evidence of God moving around us mm. and there's so much in the gospels where jesus talks about sight like oh, i wish you had eyes to see this yeah like uh, generations they wish that they could see what you're seeing right now 
Wow, that's good. And and when when my spirit comes, you're going to be able to see these things. You're you're going to know these things that you can't know right now. Mm. Like right now, you see dimly, but a time will come where you'll see and you'll know and fall. Like there's all this promise about sight and what it is to be people of sight. And our world is going to be sending a lot of confusing images and messages our way this year. We need to be people who see differently. And so this sight is a part of it. Yeah. It's a part of prayer. And again, you're going to notice, as I'm talking about prayer, very little of this is about you speaking. Most yeah. of this is about us listening. I would say sight and space go very much hand in hand. Absolutely. In my mind, like yeah. to have the space to actually see. So again, not presenting a formula, a framework, where there's a posture here yes. that encompasses, I mean, I don't know what the fifth one is, but the first four, certainly. Yeah there's a there's a posture of of being with and just how you're positioning yourself towards god yes oh i think somebody could spend the entire year just on that site one slash even space one um i think that man like that's just yeah. that's such an important spiritual discipline that you could work in and it, and it normally even works that way which is funny that god will provide us with the material things that we're asking for but God actually wants us to almost receive the spiritual things that he really wants to give to us yes. that would really help us like the ability to see yes. and actually see and observe, to be able to, the ability to actually give space to different things, yeah. the ability to actually surrender to different things, that these are actually the attributes that almost like God wants us to have you more, even though he already gives us yes. a lot of times the material things that we already asked for. I mean, God, you know, says that like, you know, look at the the birds of the air, look at the the flowers, like the flowers are already clothed in so much. How much more does your heavenly father even care about you? So he does care about, you know, our well being. but yeah. yeah. No, I'm sorry, go on. Yeah, yeah. no, no. So that's, good. No, that's that so, so good. That's so good, Alec, and, and just making it real, you're putting flesh on it. And when we talk about fasting and being in the year, and mom says this all the time, that a diet changes the way you look, but a fast changes the way you see. Mm. And so the fasting for me is it's not, it's not a hunger strike. It's not like, God, you're not pleased with me if I don't fast. It's God, you're moving and you're working and you're inviting me into something in a way that I currently can't see right now because I'm satiated, because I'm full, because I'm satisfied, because I'm just seeing what I've always seen. Like, give me eyes to see something different. And I'm mm. only looking for you in those places yes. that I've seen you or that I believe I need to see you in. Yeah. And a fast just kind of opens it up or it's like, and that's why fasts are so messy. I hate going on fast because of the stuff that comes out of me, but I also love it. But it's like, oh man, I'm fasting. I'm sorry, Julie. I'm sorry, kids. Like <laughs> stuff's gonna happen. And it's there's this purifying that happens us because we start to see things that we didn't see before. Yeah. And we have to come to terms with that and we have to move through it and we have to process it. But it's also a gift because the Spirit of God promises to meet us there and to walk us through those moments of our lives where things seem upside down or ugly or confusing, he's going to meet us there and give us even more clarity. And we saw that last January, Julie and I went on yeah. a fast together and it was, the, it was rough. Like yeah. just the things that we moved through, the things that we saw, but now looking back now, 12, you know, 12 months later, a year later, looking back, seeing how God used that it's specific moments of our year to remind us mm -hmm. so that we could go back and we can remember, we can put back together. And that's literally what remember means, like a member in the body and re, like oh. put back together wow. and see what actually happened and, and to see God's faithfulness and his goodness and see how he was working, even what felt like his absence, which leads us to the fifth, which is the promise that God never leaves us or forsakes us. It's spirit. It's the spirit of God, the power of the spirit. It's when we read in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 or Romans 12, 12, where it says pray without ceasing, that's only possible by the spirit. The final benediction in 2 Corinthians 13, where Paul says, may the communion of the spirit be with you always. Like That's this idea that God is with us. He is for us. There's nothing that we could do to separate us from the reality of his presence among us. Mm -hmm. And the accuser wants to convince us like, hey, you can't go to God about this year 
because of what you did last year. Yeah. Or you can't go to God because you don't have enough of the answers figured out. The accuser is going to come to you with accusation to try to keep you away. But the truth is, and the writer of Hebrews tells us this, the only place where we get our stuff together, the only place where all the right is, is gathered and we can make sense of it is in the presence of God. That's why the writer of Hebrews tells us to go to the throne of grace with boldness, with confidence, knowing that we were going to see mercy and grace in our time of need. And then the writer of Hebrews goes on to say that God knows everything. Mm -hmm. The word of God searches and understands. It divides things that we don't think can be divided. It searches and it knows. And because nothing is unknown, we can go with confidence to the one who promises that he will never leave us or forsake us. And it's from that place of confidence that we surrender, that we read scripture, that we take the time for space, that we believe that we can see things different. And so hmm. again, this isn't a formula. I think of all of these working together. And um, and I mean, y'all know, like my passion is prayer as life, yeah. like a different type of prayer, because I believe that we've reduced so much of, of what prayer is meant to be, we re reduced it to a small fraction of what it actually is. And by doing so, we're, we're lonely, we're confused, we're isolated, we're purposeless. All of these things yeah. that I think are caused by a lack of connection to God and prayer also connects us to others in ways that we can only be connected in prayer. Mm. Prayer will reveal things to you about other people that you cannot otherwise know about them. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking very practical stuff. I'm not talking like weird, like esoteric or ephemeral like i'm talking or not ephemeral is not the right word but i'm not talking about know that. What that means yeah it, that's, means, it means fleeting it's and that's definitely not, not, the right it's not the right word <laughs> but what what i mean is, it's it's like it's very practical like the moment in that moment what you need for that person to be able to speak in their life mm. yeah. with clarity yeah. not like a thus saith the lord or anything like just know like hey i sense god's heart for you in this moment and this is like i had a moment yesterday at a coffee shop with a guy and just ordered a drink. I was walking away. Holy Spirit was like, you need to go back and encourage him. I was like, okay. So I just turned around, walked back, started talking to him. And it became very clear why God asked me to do that. And I was able to speak in his life very specifically about a question that he had. And I'd never met this guy before. And it was a, be it was a beautiful moment. And so you just living with that. You go to coffee shops without me? I, I did yesterday. That's I, very I, ephemeral was, of you, Addison. It I can't was very ephemeral of me. So, yeah. It was. It was. Did it I was, use that right? It was, Did I use that right? No, no, okay. But, <laughs> the, the, the word, word of the day. <laughs> I, I was looking for ethereal, and I said ephemeral. But oh, ethereal, so it, is, it isn't a real word. It, it, no, ephemeral is a real word. Oh, okay. It I, means fleeting. Then never mind. Passing, I, I still feel anyway. stupid. Anyway, off of that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just pulled the wrong word. Uh, no, 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 no. Even though this one hasn't felt very family-centered parenting, yeah, this will radically change the way that you parent, specifically the way you're able to parent teenagers. Mm, when you're in God those helps. moments, God meets you there and gives you, I'm just miraculous. Yeah insight and understanding and wisdom that you would never a route you would never think is yeah. going to be the right one to go is exactly what your kid needs yeah. and by being sensitive to that you know you really are able to love them well and lead them well that is so good julia i mean just just think about just even if people who aren't listening who don't even have kids just these practices in your if life they aren't listening <laughs> oh well, well okay this? people who are listening who don't have kids thank you julie there's that that was ephemeral um I, I but anyways it. um I so the, the thing, I yeah it. it's 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 so cool it was because, ephemeral though. It, oh okay well, well, well anyways i just love because recently julie just just attack on to what you're saying uh Andrew Huberman, uh, if you guys don't know who he is, he's um, one of the leading neurologists neurologist right now. Uh, he was on Cameron Haynes' uh, podcast recently, who is a uh, bow hunter who I follow. And they were actually talking about God. And it was really cool to see the leading neurologist talk about God. Mm. And he was talking about prayer. Mm. And he was saying, he started saying, like, he was like, yeah, people talk about having like a relationship with God. And he was like, and people are saying they have like this like relationship with God. And he's like, well, I don't, I have like a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And it was something that was like kind of confusing him. Then he realized, he's like, wait, and this really helped him. He was like, actually, I think prayer is kind of like, is kind of like going to the gym in the sense that you like, if I don't ever go to the gym, then I'm never actually going to get in shape. And so prayer, he's like, and he, he said on the podcast, he said, I don't want to actually achieve in prayer and say that prayer is compared to working out because he's like, it's so much more than that. Yeah. But he, but he was realizing that he needed to get back into prayer. And I just thought it was so cool 
that this is here's somebody uh, who uh, is saying this on a podcast who is very well followed and um, people love him and uh, but anyways I was just like man there's a desire out there for people who want to pray right now and going back to Julie what you're saying about imagine people you know like parents imagine parents parenting better I mean I'm just like right now I'm just like man how amazing would it be just in our world all these different people getting more time with God mm -hmm. because then that means that they're going to get these better attributes these better spiritual attributes that are going to make them so much better in real life man there's so many people who need to be spending time with God and so many people don't know how and um Addison I know you were saying earlier you love prayer yeah you wrote a book this last year in 2023 called Words with God. Really, really amazing book. And so guys, we actually wanted to even just provide a free resource because right now, if everyone's talking about prayer, we want to make sure that actually it's something that, um, or, or if people are talking about prayer, it's something that we can help people with. And so we even have a free resource um, that uh, we want you to be able to have. Uh, it's it's the, actually the Words with God course. And yeah. so the Words with God course, you can access that by going to Messenger X. Um, and you just search Messenger X either on a web browser, but I highly recommend just downloading the app. If you download the app, um, it's a totally free app, as in like totally free. Like there, there's, yeah, there's it's, no, it's, it's not like yeah. a freemium model that you have to start paying after a month or whatever. It's, it's totally free and it's a free resource that we want people to have because this prayer is so important to what Julie was just saying about changing. I mean, imagine us going into this election year yeah. and imagine people having these these attributes, having these things that we get naturally whenever we spend time with God, it would, it would change the world. Um, but yeah, anyways. I agree. And and we'll put all the information in, in the notes wherever you're engaging with this, but it is yeah. it's a gift for y'all. Julie and I actually did it together and uh, six, six sessions on prayer is life. And I'm really excited to share. It was amazing doing it with julie that was the game changer for me i really didn't want to do the course unless i got to do it with julie yeah because i wanted it to be a conversation because prayer is a conversation yeah and and god speaks to us differently and it's so beautiful how god engages with us in our differences in a way that is specific to us but also specific to the breadth of who he is mm. and how he wants to move through our lives and reveal himself to us yeah and so yeah Go yeah. through it. Yeah. Have fun. Definitely go through it. It'll yeah. be a great beginning of the year thing. I want to give a specific challenge to people. Like definitely save this this podcast if this is something that maybe like save this specific episode and maybe go through it later in the year if you do feel like you're growing to that pride that Asim was talking about, even about these goals and things that maybe God's put on your heart for this year. Um, and definitely like, like we said, if it's a course, uh, it, um, if this is a course that maybe you think that you'll need, um, I just want to encourage people, just go right ahead, definitely get it. We'll actually uh, have a trailer at the end of this okay. for everyone who, who's on YouTube. We'll, we'll, we'll just throw a trailer um, at the end of this. And everyone else who is just listening, sorry, you missed out. But you can follow us yeah, on, on YouTube, and, on YouTube and watch the actual trailer. But yeah. man, this, this has been a great episode. Thank you so much, Addison. Addison, would you? Oh, no, Julia. I was going to say, I, I appreciate that you said it's for me, like the fasting in the year, it's I've tried to do the one and done in January and yeah. it really is um, my own personal cadence looks like January really heavy right before Easter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the Lent season and then even August before kind of everything picks up for the school year and coming out of summer, these moments where I'm like, oh, as a human, as someone who is in the midst of seasons and yeah. the changes and the busyness of life, yeah. it's not enough yeah, to just so come cool. at the beginning of the year and be like, okay, God, remember that time I surrendered? <laughs> it yeah. really is. I checked a box. Yeah, allowing yeah. the recalibration that is crucial to us as humans, yeah. hoping to live at a higher level than yeah. we naturally would to recognize the need and desperation for that. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's good. I actually wrote out a prayer. Okay. I, don't, I don't normally do that, but yeah, I wrote out a prayer, and I would I would love to invite y'all to pray this over yourselves. So I'm I'm gonna pray, and then maybe I'll repeat. How's that sound? And then yeah, I'll repeat it. along with them. Yeah. yeah. So Father, forgive me. So Father, Father, forgive me. For I know not what I do. For I know, I know not what, what I, I do. do. I need your grace. I need your grace to see what I otherwise cannot see. To see what, see I, what I otherwise cannot, cannot see. see. To feel what I otherwise could not feel. To feel what I otherwise could not feel. And do what I otherwise couldn't do. And do what I otherwise could not do. Deliver me from my pride. 
deliver me from, from my pride. pride. And into the arms. And into, and into the, the arms. Of the consuming fire. Of the, of the consuming, consuming fire. fire. May anything that is not truly me. May anything, anything that, that is, is not, not truly me. Be lost in you. Be lost in you. Grant me the righteousness. Grant me the righteousness. Peace. Peace. And joy of your son. And joy of your son. Please speak to me. Please speak, speak to, me. to me. I am listening. I am listening. I am yours. I am yours. Amen. 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 Let me tell you a secret about prayer. Hardly anyone thinks they're good at it. Young and old, we all have questions about prayer. So what's the disconnect? Could it be that we're looking at prayer all wrong? What about when it feels like God is silent? Am I doing too much of the talking? Or too little? Or what about when prayers are answered? Was something different that caused God to move on your behalf? Did you finally mix the right words with the right faith, with the right timing? Does prayer even have anything to do with you? If you've ever had questions like these, you're not alone. There are answers that guide us into the connection and clarity we crave. Prayer isn't a formula, it's a relationship. You don't figure out a relationship. You don't crack the code, solve it, and move on. You enter into it. You experience it. You give yourself to it. You embrace it as a way of life. If you're ready to trade boring, empty prayer for real connection, you've come to the right place. I'm Julie Bevere. I'm Addison Bevere. And this is the Words with God course.